Between 2022 and 2024, artificial intelligence took a massive leap. It moved from being something most people only heard about to something millions of people are using every single day. So what changed? Let's break it down into three major shifts. The first big shift was the rise of what is called transformer architecture. This is a special design that helps AI understand language much better than it did before. Before transformers, models read words one at a time, following a list from top to bottom, but that approach often missed the meaning. Transformers work differently. They look at all the words in a sentence at once and ask, what words relate to each other? What do they really mean together? For example, take this sentence. She said her dog chased the ball because it was a scientist. What does it refer to? The dog or the ball? A transformer can look at the full sentence and figure out it probably means the dog. This ability to understand the relationship between words and what makes ChatGPT feel like you're talking to someone who actually gets what you're saying. The second change is the use of GPU acceleration or graphics processing units were originally created to handle video games and animation, but they turned out to be perfect for teaching AI. Here's why. When you train an AI model, you're showing it millions of examples that used to take weeks or months using older processors. With GPUs, training can happen thousands of times faster. Instead of teaching one piece of information at a time, you can teach hundreds or even thousands of pieces in, in pieces in parallel. It's like going from reading a book word by word to scanning the entire page at once. The speed has allowed for researchers to build more improved AI models more rapidly than ever before. Now let's talk about the third major shift. This is the one is about scale. The modern AI models are trained on extremely large data sets. We are not talking about a few textbooks or a few articles or full regular books. We're talking about almost the entire open internet, including millions of conversations, videos, documents, images. These models also have billions of internal settings that you could think of those digital brain connections. What surprises Research is that what happened when you combine that much data with so much computing power, the model starts to show skills that were not directly taught. These are called emergent abilities. For example, the model might learn to translate between two languages, even if it was never given side by side examples, or it might learn how to solve logic puzzles Right? The AI is not just copying and pasting from memory. It's learning patterns from connections and creating something new every time it responds. What changed? We got smart at building AI transformers. We got fast at using GPUs. And we got better at scaling up the size of depth of training. These three changes, smarter design, faster training, and massive scale, are what made today's general AI possible, and they continue to push what's the possible next. If you're wondering why everyone is suddenly talking about artificial intelligence, you're not alone. The truth is, AI has been around for decades, but something feels very different now. There are three big reasons behind that feeling. First is speed. In the past, using AI felt slow. You might wait minutes, hours, or even days for results. But today, you can open a tool like ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot, type in a request, and get full answers in seconds. Imagine asking, summarize this 10-page report for me and watch it happen right in front of you. Or saying, create five headline options for my product launch, get instant creative ideas. This speed makes AI feel like magic, but it's not magic. It's just a result of better models faster processors, and smarter systems. The second reason is accessibility. In the past, AI tools were built by and for experts. You needed to be a data scientist, a programmer, or have deep technical skills just to try something. 
Now, anyone with a browser or phone can use AI. You're seeing it inside your phone from Apple Intelligence, Google Gemini. You're seeing it in your doctor's offices everywhere. So students, business owners, marketers, and even kids are using AI to learn, create, and solve problems. There are no complicated setups, no code required, and no advanced degrees needed. You just need to ask questions. And the tool responds. This is a major shift. And the third reason is usefulness. AI is used to feel like research tool or science fiction idea. Now it's solving real problems right away. People are using to write resumes, improve spreadsheets, generate product descriptions, learn new skills, even plan for family vacations. The results are not perfect, but they are helpful. And it's many cases, they save time, reduce stress, and give people a head start. So why does AI feel different now? Because it's fast, because it's available to everyone, and because it actually helps. That's the combination of what makes this moment in AI so powerful. Humans have limitations. We can only work nine to five, have limited knowledge, need breaks, and learn slowly. In contrast, AI systems are available 24 seven, have vast knowledge bases, work continuously, and can instantly recognize patterns. Both still require some level of supervision, but the AI capabilities far surpass those of a human intern. This slide is meant to humorously highlight the key differences between human and AI capabilities, emphasizing on AI ability to work tirelessly and draw extensive knowledge. The split visually reinforces this comparison with the tiring human intern and contrast the energetic training AI assistant. But okay, this is not to scare you. It's to say, hey, you have something powerful if you are an intern. Use these tools to make you superhuman and perform better than someone doing their role for 10 years because you can. And that's what I want you to walk away from this training, feeling empowered and ready to take the next step. The great thing is part two will be released soon and you just got to join the text of Simplify Growth Pass. It's $9.99. It's less than buying a whole sheet of pizza. So get it and make sure you do it because our training is meant to solve real problems. We're focused on outcomes and just not training for training's sake. Let's take a look at three popular AI tools that people are often using right now and what they can actually do for you. First is ChatGPT. This tool is great for writing, explaining, and brainstorming. You can use it to write professional emails, clean up your resume, get help with an essay, or even explain code in plain language. For example, you might say, write a polite follow-up email to a client who has not responded in two weeks, and ChatGPT will draft one for you in seconds. Or maybe you want to understand what a chunk of Python code is doing, just paste it in ChatGPT and ask, can you explain this as a beginner? Second is GitHub Copilot. The tool is designed for people who write code. It's like having a helpful coding partner that makes suggestions while you type. You start typing a function and it predicts what you want to do next. It even can write small blocks of code and fix some simple bugs or even help with your structure in a new project. If you're a developer or learning code, this can save you time and help you write cleaner and more efficient code. And third is Google. Gemini does many of the same things. You can ask it to write blog posts, answer questions, summarize information, and also built on Google tools like Gmail, Docs, get writing, help right where you're working. And if you're working on a cover letter like Google Docs, Gemini can help with word sentences or just or even rewrite the whole thing based on what you're trying to say. All three of these tools are powerful and has its own strengths and limitations. The best way to choose is to start with a task that matters to you and try it out. AI isn't about replacing your work, it's about making you work easier and faster to complete. And these are only three. We didn't talk about Microsoft Copilot, which is excellent. You also have Grok. You also have Claude. You have Perplexity. There's so many models out there that you can leverage that are helpful. You just gotta find out one that works for you and learn as much as you can. Get great at it and then learn another one. Like for me, I use ChatGPT for most things, 
but I also might use Gemini for video creation. I also like to use Gemini for YouTube summarizations. I like to use Copilot at work within Outlook, within Teams, within PowerPoint. I like to use GitHub Copilot if I'm trying to learn how to code because I am. And it helps me give me ideas on where my code is missing and what can I do to fix it. Take your time and find something that you want to learn and use one of these tools to figure out what works for you.